also thought that maybe uh, from from outside uh, with the pressures that we have in, 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 in development agencies, which in the main are often controlled by city councils, but to actually paint the context that the country and, and the profession operates in. Um, South Africa, as we all know, is struggling to make local government work. We, we've got lack of skills, there. there's death of senior management infrastructures, and, and that has reached critical levels and is recognized as one of the underlying root causes of dysfunctional um, cities and dysfunctional municipalities. For instance, in financial year 2010-11, only 13% of the of 283 municipalities received clean audits, which included none of the of the country's metros. And more than half of the municipalities either did not submit financial records timelessly or received a qualified audit and had this opinion by some instances a complete display. And supply chain management was one of the aspects that had been investigated by the Auditor General and according to his records, billions of friends worth of procurement could not be audited due to lack of or, or non-submission of, of relevant documentation and supporting documentation. And there's a um, serious matter where almost half of those municipal contracts were awarded to employees, to councillors, and other city officials. And therefore, in the main, it was found that there's lack of accountability and efficiency of enforcement. And that's the one hand when we're actually talking about the <coughs> custodians or the representatives of who the customer is. Let's go to the other side. Of construction industry has fallen under scrutiny with the reports that top firms read uh, contracts with billions of friends, including for 2010 World Cup Stadia, the Kuhar Development Zone in this city, and of course our beloved how in Johannesburg in Victoria. Media reports state that the racket has been described as a well-established secret society which held meetings where tenders were allocated to certain companies. This distribution of work was done on the basis of a perceived uh, market share. Corruption Watch then has labeled this horizontal collusion as particularly very challenging form of collusion because it represents an assault on the living standards of people who depend <coughs> on public services being provided. That is the context that we find ourselves in. However, we, we cannot say it's all gloom and doom, particularly with the National Planning Commission having developed the, end, the National Development Plan, which recognizes the need to address apartheid spatial patterns. It broadly provides, I quote, by 2050, South Africa will no longer have poverty traps in rural areas and urban townships. Workers isolated on the periphery of cities, inner cities controlled by slumlords and crime, sterile suburbs with homes surrounded by high walls and, and electric fences, households spending 30% or more of their time, energy, and money on daily commuting, decaying infrastructure with power blackouts, undrinkable water, potholes, and block sewers, violent protest gridlock roads and unreliable public transport, new public housing in barren urban landscape, new private investment creating exclusive enclaves for the rich, fearful immigrant communities living in confined spaces or rural communities dying as local production collapses. In other ways, the National Development Plan envisions a resilient, livable, and sustainable cities that are well managed. These cities will be stitched together by reliable public transport systems supported by access to affordable accommodation, high quality public spaces and amenities, and good community services. In these cities, there will be more walking and cycling. Security barriers will come down in suburbs as people reclaim their streets. There will be public art, performance in heritage gardens, and people will live in environmental friendly lifestyles. 
ladies and gentlemen, in order for us to achieve with these ideals, city officials, urban designers and architects in the private sector and academics need to indeed strike a new deal. A new deal that seeks to implement architectural and planning practices in order to overcome the social, political, and cultural divisions of apartheid and to respond to the fluidity of post apartheid landscape. This new thinking will simultaneously contribute to develop South Africa's enormous economic potential <coughs> and to make its metropolitan areas strong competitors in the global village. <coughs> The Johannesburg Development Agency, for which I work for, has a proud tradition of employing respected built environment professionals to advise and to inform development and designs of all projects. This practice adds some upfront costs in the project, but in our experience, many unforeseen and avoidable unforeseen um, costs in the construction stage are anticipated and avoided through good design, project design preparation. We believe that a carefully prepared and informed scope of works for construction tender will reduce the possibility of variations and complexities in the management of the contract during construction. The JDA is about 15 years old, or is getting to be 15 years old currently. In other words, it has actually gone through three mayoral terms. And those three mayoral terms, each of them has got a very distinct history and a footprint in Johannesburg and the interactions that Johannesburg Development Agency has either with the city and city officials and politicians, with academia, and also with the, with the um, urban designers and architects in private practice. First mayoral term, which was from inception to around about 2005, the JDA came into a situation where Johannesburg and the inner city of Johannesburg was experiencing or had just in the middle of crime and crime. There was almost no hope that you could turn one of the largest, largest inner cities in South Africa from total collapse to a place where business can begin to thrive. So what was required was not only a vision that came from officials, but a vision that had to be shared by people who continued to invest in the inner city of Johannesburg. The vision with was led by a mayor who was actually committed because what was required was just after 1994, which was about 2005, yeah, 2000, 2001 here, where there were the, 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 the issues around poverty, the issues around expectations of the people of Johannesburg, we had just discovered um, the city was, which was for a very long time close to them. We had the, we having so many expectations. So the mayor of Johannesburg and the leadership of Johannesburg had two options. You either go and deal with all the challenges in Johannesburg by actually going to invest in small, soft, expansionist uh, 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 projects, or you come up with projects that are going to be big to be able to tell the story that Johannesburg is open for business and it's ready to turn around. And the mayor opted for the second option, which was as a city alone, there is no possibility, at least in this world, to turn around the inner city of Johannesburg without the partnerships with the private sector and the investors. And therefore, the interventions that we actually brought, they were interventions that sought to give confidence. You recall we, we built the Nelson Mandela Bridge. There was a precinct in Newtown, which was an arts and culture precinct. And, and the precinct in Constitution Hill. And those were the major projects that sought to create <coughs> confidence in the inner city of Johannesburg. They were big, they were iconic, they were catalytic, catalytic, and at the same time, 
it actually costed a huge amount of money. And it was a very, very, very difficult and, and a risky bet for a new mayor in Johannesburg to actually opt for that. And that was long before his vision of actually tarring all the streets in Soweto. So the new town, the Nelson Mandela, the constitution here were decisions in terms of urban regeneration which were taken before the decision to go and tar all the streets or in Soweto. So it was a bold decision which actually put the seat to turn around a new town, to turn around Bramfontein in terms of public environment upgrades, in terms of partnership, in terms of establishment of city improvement districts and to actually manage those areas. That was the first five years of, of, of the JDA. And because of the nature of the interventions that the mayor envisioned, the JDA by its nature had to be dependent on urban designers because there is all our interventions, more than anything, were not engineering interventions, but were urban design interventions that sought to turn around areas, that sought to bring confidence, that sought to bring elements of livability, which is why when we had um, big public squares, Marrakesh General, we had parks, we had workable public um, uh, transport facilities like the Metro Park, we had um, social housing uh, um, uh, with brick fields. So our understanding and our creation always uh, dependent on the professionals around urban um, um, designers in particular. We had a very close relationship with the development planning or city transformation department with development planning. So we were able to get the opportunity to talk and people to listen. And that was the first time. However, the second mayoral term was not to be like the first mayoral term. There's Nelson Mandela Bridge. Bramfontein is beginning to turn around. Newtown was working perfectly. Johannesburg has won the constitutional court from whoever else was trying to get the constitutional court located in their city, and there it was a constitution here. And the mayor was happy, I think. And then on the second mayoral term, there was no commitment, as much commitment to the Johannesburg Development Agency as it was then. By the way, the JDA, when it was established, it was established as a special purpose vehicle that was going to uh, be in existence for five years. So the sixth year of our existence, we had to fight for a continuation of the agency for the next year and, and um, indefinitely. And the JDA then has to focus on small precincts um, and uh, interventions and investment in precincts and that were neighborhood level that sought to make neighborhoods that were not working to begin to work and we also move to historically marginalized areas such as Deep Slot and Soweto in the, in the, in the, in the next five years. And, and in those interventions were guided by a very um, wide understanding of what we needed to do, whether it's for tourism, whether it's for improved um, neighborhood development, etc. And we fought a uh, lot of, 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 of projects that were that size. Except that we were fortunate in the middle of that second mayoral term to be awarded or to be appointed as the city's implementer for the 2010 uh, Soccer World Cup, all, all the projects except for the actual stadium and all the supporting infrastructure, including the infrastructure for the rear via bus rapid transit system. So the life actually changed, and it was an introduction to the new focus of the third term, which is transit-oriented development, developing transit <coughs> and commuter corridors, and densification along those corridors. So for us, because of the work, kind of work that we, we do, we have no option but to procure urban, money, urban design services and to some extent, depending on whether there are buildings in our development, to actually look at architects and as, 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 as architects. But procuring these goods is not very easy. It's not something easy to do. It's 
such an extent that in, in March 2011, we hosted a workshop with uh, um, guys from government of, of um, Europe's European government, including the Flemish, the German, the French, to look at procurement systems for public architecture and urban design and to compare how South Africa was doing it and how other countries in Europe were actually doing um, uh, that. And the audience of architects, urban designers in both private and uh, public and, uh, employment, government officials, were also in, were, were involved in constructive discussion about a range of procurement approaches from design competition to public tenders. Whilst as the JDA we've used some of these approaches, there were certain elements where we're still struggling. For instance, one of the processes or project that actually goes very well in Johannesburg and is led by the JDA is a procurement of a public um, public act. So our public art program goes like a, a clockwork. So each and every project is public art, etc. And it's because we manage to interpret a provision in the supply chain management that relates to how we procure public art. So public art is consultative, is workshopped, is competitions, is training, is development, is not a, a bid procurement or a bid evaluation or a bid adjudication committee sitting in some corner, but it's a process that is actually led by artists, by experts, by urban designers to actually say how do you procure public art that talk uh, to your public environment. We still have mastered in terms of public environment upgrades, how we can actually look at that. However, I think with um, the city has, has, has concluded a memorandum of understanding with universities of the Vedvarasand and Johannesburg with the aim of getting these universities to assist the city in terms of urban design and uh, uh, that will help us to reintegrate and reimagine the city. And it is hoped that this public, public partnership will assist the city to obtain the requisite professional and academic input without following the stringent procurement that is obtained uh, during development, uh, obtaining development designs. And it seems that the National Treasury is, 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 uh, seems to be supportive of, 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 of such an initiative. So there's an urban design framework that JDA develops for each and every person that we work in. There's going to be a framework that we enter into with academia that is actually going to have a stamp of support from National Treasury and we are hoping that the same um, uh, provision that is contained for art and the supply chain management processes will actually be included for the provision and obtaining services of urban designers in our intervention. And we also believe that um, if the, the, the the universities and the cities work together and are able to actually conclude this, this, this understanding and actually get the support that is required from National Treasury to reduce or to relax the supply chain management uh, processes. The encouragement of design competition is going to be way to go. So how we do design competition from Johannesburg is the first phase is not a funded design competition. But once you make it to the first, to the five or six preferred designs by an independent um, uh, assessment uh, uh, committee, then we actually fund those designs so that people are able, and students actually participate in that, and small um, urban designers will fund the designs to be taken to from a um, very uh, preliminary concept to a detailed concept. And once that is actually approved, it then will be taken to, to the actual uh, uh, complete design. But that process, for now, we've managed to convince the Auditor General and to convince National Treasury that is something that is good and that is good to work with. 
and we actually believe that going forward we should actually uh, support that. And I think to the ECIA, uh, from the JDA, we think that we support your motion and that you need to engage with the Minister of, uh, in the Presidency and the National uh, Planning Commission so that we can proactively discuss the issues that you have raised in this conference and to put forward proposals of how the profession can assist in achieving the objective of the National Development Plan, including the idea of, uh, of the kind of um, design competitions that we're talking about rather than um, the RFPs um, that are actually common in cities. And secondly, we also encourage you to initiate a forum in relating to procurement of urban design and architectural services uh, through the same way of public competition and to allow independent professional designers to sit in evaluation of this design with both the National Treasury and SALCA. And because we've got a living example of these things having been done, so we understand that National Treasury is actually sympathetic um, to these kind of things. Because today, more than anything, more than the boxes that have been ticked and all the, the, the um, compliance is sustainability of the projects that municipalities have to, invent, uh, to invest in and also when these actually talk to resolving the social economic challenges um, that our cities especially are, are facing. Thank you very much.